Thank you. The next item of business is an urgent question, and I call Jamie Green. Uh, can I thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer? Uh, can I ask the Scottish Government what it is doing to reduce deaths in custody in light of new statistics showing that a record number of people have died in prisons in the past three years? Cabinet Secretary Keith Brown. Uh, first and foremost, my thoughts are with everyone who has lost a loved one in prison custody. The safety and well-being of people who are in prison uh, are, is a priority, and we recognise that we need to do more to support positive health outcomes for vulnerable people in prisons. The Prison Health and Social Care Needs Assessment, which we published in September, and the work undertaken in response to the Independent Deaths in Custody Review are key steps in our commitment to achieving that aim. All frontline staff are trained in the Scottish Prison Services Prevention of Suicide Strategy, which provides a person-centred care pathway for prisoners who are at risk of suicide and promotes a supportive environment in which people can ask for help. Individuals are screened on their arrival at prison. When needed, the SPS and the National Health Service work together to support vulnerable individuals and review them regularly. We are also working with partners and brief families to implement the recommendations from the Death and Prison Custody Review. Jamie Green. Uh, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer? And we too uh, pass our thoughts and condolences to all families affected by this, all 121 of them since 2020. These figures are significantly, significantly worse in Scotland than they are in other parts of the UK. In Scotland, 15% of prison inmates have long-term mental health problems, 30% of them have alcohol use disorder, and 17% actually have a history of self-harm. Yet, despite all these challenges, there continues to be huge variation in the provision of mental health nurses within the prison estate. For example, in HMP Berlin, it's just one nurse per 282 inmates. I raised this disturbing trend explicitly with the First Minister in October of this year. So, with these deaths in custody at this tragic new high, can I ask what further progress has been made on the First Minister's own pledge to improve conditions and reduce these needless and avoidable deaths? Cabinet Secretary. First of all, can I acknowledge the point that uh, Jamie Green makes about the difference um, in Scotland to the rest of the UK? I think it's a, a, a relevant uh, factor to look at. I think it is more complex than is sometimes suggested. But of course, we would point to the fact that uh, whether it's through COVID deaths or the impact of uh, COVID itself on the uh, mental health of prisoners, there are particular things which have made this period more difficult. However, that's also true, of course, in England and Wales. So I acknowledge the fact there's a difference here which we have to interrogate. And for that reason, I think we have to look, take some time to look at uh, all the elements of, of the report. Uh, and for example, if you look at the way that the uh, Ministry of Justice reports uh, their deaths is significantly different. Um, so, collating suicides and deaths, for example, including drug over, uh, overdoses in the category of self-inflicted deaths in 2021, 86 deaths were self-inflicted in England and Wales, which is an increase of 28 per cent from the previous year. However, we do want to get to the bottom of the fact that in Scotland, uh, under the latest figures, which go back now to 2018 from the Council of Europe, we are up at 47.6 uh, deaths uh, for 10,000, whereas in England and Wales it's 39.5. So it's a legitimate difference. We are taking, engaging with NHS, SPS and prison care networks to embed the medication-assisted treatment standards in prison settings. There's additional support being provided for uh, the provision of health services, although it is an ongoing issue. And of course, there's also been an impact uh, through what we've heard uh, in the previous set of questions in terms of staff uh, difficulties, uh, locating new staff for the health service. That also has a, an impact on prison as well. But I'm happy to keep uh, Jamie Green updated uh, as we go forward. Jamie Green. Uh, uh, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that further response? I mean, this clearly isn't a race to the bottom on statistics. Um, there is a tragic rise in these statistics. And behind every statistic, as we all know, is a life and a life lost. It's not just suicides that are on the rise in prisons, but drug deaths as well, Cabinet Secretary. Now, thanks to pressure from prison officers and these benches, drug-soaked mail has now been photocopied before presented to uh, prisoners. But clearly, these statistics demonstrate that dangerous illicit drugs are still making their way into our prisons somehow. Uh, now, you recently told the, uh, pardon, through the chair, the Cabinet Secretary told the Justice Committee, we should not accept the presence of drugs in our prison as inevitable. Now, I agree entirely with that sentiment. So I will ask the Cabinet Secretary if he will back my call today to make all Scottish prisons drug-free by 2025. We think it's doable. If you do back these calls, Cabinet Secretary, how will it be done? If you don't back those calls, why not? 
Come to Secretary. Rather than backing calls, I think I'd want to take the responsible step of looking at what the provisions and the measures are that are suggested within that call uh, before taking a judgment on that. So I'm happy to have that discussion. In addition to the fact that we have initiated the photocopying of previously infused drug-infused items, which has had a very beneficial impact, not just in terms of individual prisoners' health, but also in trying to break the hold of serious organised crime to some extent, we of course have new equipment, for example at Barlini, which seeks to do a whole body scan to ensure there are no drugs coming in that way. What we have found, to be perfectly frank, is an increase, a consequential increase in over-the-wall um, attempts to get drugs into prison, which is no different from every other jurisdiction. So this is a continuing campaign. I think we've had significant progress in terms of reducing uh, the way into prisons for drugs. I do agree there's further to do, and I'm happy to look at any uh, concrete proposals which the member wants to put forward. A supplementary, Pauline McNeill. Thank you. The report by Glasgow University said that a person in prison in 2022 would be twice as likely to die in jail as someone in 2008, which is quite a shocking statistic. And as Jamie Green has said, 29 deaths by suicide is significantly higher um, than in England, which the Cabinet Secretary has acknowledged. As the Cabinet Secretary, what the Scottish Government will do to identify why this is the case? And in that, will they examine whether the restrictions in prisons, less times out of cells, for example, and any other restrictions are leading to this loss of hope, particularly when you look at the suicide deaths. And will the Cabinet Secretary give me an assurance that he is, continues to talk to the trade unions who provide an invaluable insight into the availability of drugs and the running of prisons generally so that we can get this right? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I'm happy to uh, confirm we do continue to talk to the trade unions. That's perhaps a bit dominated of late by, of course, the pay negotiations which are going on. But the various visits which I've had to a number of prisons um, finds the fact that, just as Paul McNeill says, the best people to understand the problem and perhaps provide solutions are those that are working uh, on the front line in relation to, uh, relation to do this. I think he's also right to say that the restrictions which were necessary during the course of the COVID pandemic will, of course, have an effect on the mental health of prisoners. We understand that, which is why we agreed to the recommendation from the uh, prison inspectorate to say that we should get rid of these uh, as far as possible at the same time as the general population were having uh, these restrictions uh, lifted. I would also say and recently in relation to mobile phones the purpose of this is to make sure that prisoners can be in contact with family and in particular children uh, which I think have been a beneficial impact but there is no question that we have to continue to examine this working with partners like the trade unions to get the best possible understanding so we can find the right way forward. A supplementary Audrey Nicol. Officer. So in addition to the action already outlined by the Cabinet Secretary, can I ask what additional steps are being taken to improve prisoner welfare and well-being so as to tackle the tragic issue of prison suicides? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the uh, Prison Service is developing its health and wellbeing strategy, which focuses on suicide prevention and self-harm. And the prevention of suicide in prison strategy aims to care for those at risk of suicide by providing a person-centred care pathway based on an individual's needs, its strengths and its assets, and by promoting a supportive environment where people in SBS custody can ask for help. I've uh, witnessed this at close range in terms especially of those who are just admitted to prison for the first time and the traumatic impact that can have on people and the way that frontline SBS staff uh, are trained to deal uh, with that, uh, not least in relation to prevention of suicide. So individuals are screened on their arrival at prison. When needed, the SBS and the National Health Service, as I've said, work together to support vulnerable individuals and review them uh, regularly. Uh, we will continue to make sure that we refine that. I think we do want to take a bit more time to look at the report, which has a lot to say about the Talk to Me strategy, which is used in prison. So I think rather than give a snap judgment on the report, I would take some time to read it and happy to converse with the member in due course on the provisions in the report. And supplementary, Liam McCarthy. Uh, thank you very much. In light of the report, I wonder whether the Cabinet Secretary could confirm whether he's looking uh, at uh, tightening up the deadlines for commencing reviews into deaths in custody, uh, but also improving access to legal aid uh, for families uh, who are navigating a very challenging process at the most difficult of times. Cabinet Secretary. Hey, I I'm not sure I caught all of that, but I think that part of the question was about the timetables in relation to FAIs. And just to say, of course, the FAI system that we have is independently run by the Crown Office, as the member knows. And also that in 2016, the Parliament voted unanimously for the way that system uh, was to be changed. And there has been substantial additional resources given to the Crown Office to address this, and there have been substantial uh, successes. But the way in which we'd want to try and 
Well, one way in which we can address that is through the deaths in custody review, which may mean rather than duplicate some of these processes, it may be possible where there is no evidence of criminality to get to a faster conclusion. And also part of that re review to go to the point I think it was made by Lee MacArthur in terms of families, much more consistent informing of the families at the right time, uh, which wasn't done in the past, uh, that has been taken forward as part of the review. And uh, we have had very good engagement from families who have been affected by the fact that this was not done in the right way in the past. For example, now, I think in the recent uh, three to four months, every single uh, death in custody, as I understand it, has been followed up by a phone call from the governor or an officer within the prison to the family or to the next of kin to make sure they are advised as soon as possible. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes the urgent question and there will be a very short pause before we move on to the next item of business. Thank you.